Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Wood-Fired Calzone. Well today we're going to be bringing together some elements that we've been building on for the last couple of months from our pizza dough made from scratch and our Italian sausage that you saw last week. So right away I'll tell you, you want the full video, the full rundown on those elements, check out the link in the description below. So we're going to take those ingredients and a handful of other really tasty ones, some cheeses of course, bring them together for a calzone today, cooking it on the wood-fired oven. So we gotta get that fire going. This is the Clementi Pulsanella. It's a wood-fired deck oven. So we're gonna start by building a fire right in the center here. And as those break down, those logs break down into coals, we're gonna move them off to the side and cook our calzones on the far right side of the oven away from the heat. Now we're not cooking as hot and fast as we would, uh, say a Neapolitan style pizza. Um, so we're probably gonna be 450, 500 range as far as temperature goes, but we're still gonna get that wood aroma just at a slightly lower temperature and a little bit longer cook. So we're gonna start off with some oak wood today. And I just like to use some little fire starters to help get this going. These are the Kamado Joe ones. I'll put one at either end and then we'll just kind of log cabin these things up. Those three layers here. We grab our torch and fire it up. So we've got some components to work through for our calzone. Uh, one of them that we can do while the fire is still burning down by those, while those logs are breaking down, is we get started on our tomato sauce. Now I'll tell you right now, there's no tomato sauce going in the calzone, but I do like to have some red sauce on the side for dipping in, and that's what we're gonna put together now. Really simple, four ingredients, we'll just do it on the side burner for now. So we're gonna start with whole Italian tomatoes. These are similar to San Marzano's, just not grown in that region, although they are from Italy. And I want a smooth red sauce today, so we're gonna blitz them before we cook them. So we get the lodge skillet going over medium heat here on the Heston Q. And I'm just gonna add a couple tablespoons here of the Dedicati Olitalia meat, uh, meat specific olive oil. You really just need enough to kind of coat the bottom of the skillet there. That's probably a little more than we need, so I'll take a little bit of that out. And you don't have to add olive oil to your tomato sauce for sure, but one thing we know about fat is that it carries flavor. So by adding a little bit of olive oil, we can kind of get all of those flavors carried and coated in your mouth when you actually taste the tomato sauce. Next, I'm gonna add a bit of garlic, and I'm just gonna grate it super fine on the microplane here probably about like one or two typical size cloves. I know clove sizes kind of vary, but you know, like a teaspoon or so. That's not what you want. And last, we're gonna add a bit of our black garlic salt. So a little more garlic flavor from the Jacobson salt. And that salt just to wake all those flavors up, bring it to life. So we just want a gentle simmer on this. We can kind of forget about it probably for about 10 minutes here, although check on it every once in a while, make sure you're not scorching anything. Go slow. And all we're looking to do is thicken this up and then bring all those flavors to life. Now for those of you concerned about cooking a red sauce down in a cast iron skillet, I'm gonna tell you about this study I read that America's Test Kitchen did where they cooked down tomato sauce in seasoned cast iron next to a steel pan and then they sent the results off to the lab to check for the metal content and found that uh, it was mere milligrams more of metal that was showing up, uh, a negligible amount. So while I wouldn't recommend storing your tomato sauce in cast iron, uh, 20 minutes isn't gonna cause any harm. All right, you can see we've got a nice coal base going. Everything's burned down, so it's time to slide in our grate. Slip this right in here, and take it all to the left side. We'll go ahead and add another log while we're at it and then sweep the deck. We just want to make sure we don't get any little fragments of the charcoal or the wood in our food. So we'll move that all the way over to the fire. Start with a clean deck. Now we've got some Italian sausage to cook. So I'm going to slide 
our cast iron skillet in here on the hot spot and get that warming up. So let's just do a quick flyby here of what we're gonna be making today. We've got our red wine Italian sausage that we made in the tips and techniques video uh, just last week actually. We've got some spinach we're gonna cook down. So we're gonna cook this in the skillet then we're gonna cook our spinach in the skillet, and then we've got our cheeses. So you gotta have ricotta when it comes to a calzone. And we're gonna mix our ricotta up with some Tuscan steak seasoning and some fresh parsley. And then we've got some low moisture mozzarella and some provolone. For our ricotta mixture, we've got a cup and a half of whole milk ricotta. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of our Tuscan steak seasoning. So we get some of those Italian herbs in here, as well as some salt and garlic. And you can see those red pepper flakes as well. And then brighten and freshen things right up with a little fresh parsley. Just a couple tablespoons minced. And we'll just give that a mix. So a lot of fattiness and moisture in the ricotta, which is why we're using a low moisture mozzarella. As much as I love fresh mozzarella, we don't want to add too much liquid to the inside of this calzone. Yeah, we have 400 degrees on here, so that's hot enough to start cooking. So we're going to go in the skillet with our sausage. Good fat content on there, so I'm not worried about getting any extra oil in there right now. I'm not going to break this down all the way, but I want like some nice good sized chunks of this bulk sausage. So we're just going to break it up a little bit. All right, let's let it get a nice crust on it. Slide it back in there. Guys, I've got my dough, uh, pizza dough here. It's just finished the bulk from it stage, so it's ready to be divided into dough balls. Uh, I'm just gonna weigh it here. Uh, this 500 gram batch of flour, about a pound and 12 ounces. So that's, uh, let's see, 28 ounces. We're gonna divide that into three. So about nine ounces per dough ball. You just kind of eyeball this. 11, a little heavy. I'll get there. Nine, seven, nine, three, perfect. Nine, five, nine, seven. All right. So if we want to do big calzones, uh, a third of a pizza batch is what I do. If we're gonna do little ones, I would go more individual, even half of that. So these small dough balls would be like an individual calzone. And we're just gonna stretch that tight on top. We'll let those rest again before we roll them out. And same thing with the big guys, stretch that tight on top. And we'll cover these with plastic and let them rest Give that gluten a break. Ooh, we're getting some nice browning on top. Hey, yeah, there's some nice crust on the bottom as well. We'll just kind of flip these around and break them up. This is about browned through. We don't really need much more time on that. And we've got some good color on there. I think we can go ahead and pull this. So the plan here is let's remove our browned sausage keep the skillet in here hot so we can cook down the spinach as well. And we'll utilize that pork fat that's come out of the sausage while we're cooking, uh, cooking down our spinach. We've got 12 ounces of spinach here. It looks like quite a pile, but it's gonna cook down quite a bit. And this is enough to make three large calzones. Yeah, immediately it starts to wilt down in that hot skillet. So we'll just push this inside and let it continue to cook down. And just like that, we lose all that volume as we cook some of the moisture out of this spinach. But important step, like I said, we don't want to add too much water to the inside of our filling. All right, well that's about what we're looking for. We cooked a lot of that moisture out of there. That's gonna help out a lot really intensify that spinach flavor as well. 
Well, we've got all the components and ingredients ready to go, so it's time to put it all together. Uh, I'm gonna try a little experiment today. After we filmed our video for the pizza dough, we got a lot of questions about that dough. And one of the questions we were getting was, how long will this last? Can you leave it in the fridge overnight? Um, you know, I've done some of that, but for the most part, when I make it, I use it. So what I thought I would do today is use some dough that I made yesterday and we'll see how it performs compared to the dough that I made today. So this first one is a day old pizza dough here and we'll do a fresh one here in a little bit. Now with uh, pizzas, I often like to stretch by hand, but for the sake of this calzone, I'm gonna be using a rolling pin just so that we can try and get that perfect shape and even thickness. The pizza dough, I'd probably put a little crust around the edges and bulk it up, but we want this to be all about the same thickness. So far, this dough's looking pretty good. It does spread out quite a bit when you leave it overnight. So we'll see if we still get some good pop out of it once it hits the oven. So this would be the larger sized calzone here. We'll go for about a 12 inch round, roughly. All right, well, let's load it up here. We're gonna start with some of our ricotta mixture, our seasoned ricotta mixture. This is gonna make it really nice and creamy. Probably about a third of a cup, half a cup, something like that. Enough to cover the bottom. Next, we'll get some of that Italian sausage on there. There's some spinach. And then our cheeses. A little bit of that mozzarella. Ooh, and the provolone for the bite. All right, so we've left ourselves a little border here so we can seal this up and to get the maximum stick out of that just gonna dip my fingers in water here and wet the edge of the dough bring it all together I'll line that up just right hopefully get any air pockets out if not it's not the end of the world we're gonna cut some slits some vents so just give it a good press That water's gonna help the stick. A little bit more water on here. So as we start to crimp this, it's got something to grab onto. I'll tell you, this is not one of the techniques that is my forte. Of all the years I spent making pizzas and working in bakery, I've never been the greatest at the perfect crimp. All right, we got it all enclosed there. We cut ourselves just a few slits right here on the surface to let some of that air out as it cooks. These vents on top. Unless that looks nice. If we got enough flour going here, and I think we do, we should be able to just shoot this peel on here. There we go. First try. So we're gonna go to the cooler side of the oven now. With a calzone, I would much rather go a little slower and get it baked through before we get too much color on it. If we need some extra color at the end, we can always slide it over or add another log to get those flames lipping over the top. Now, obviously, when you're working with a wood fire like this, it's harder to get the temperature exactly the same every single time. We are above 400 degrees on that far right side. It's gonna be hotter than that closer to the fire. So if you're cooking these on any other type of grill, just know you wanna go probably in the 400 to 450 range. And if you're waiting a little bit longer than how fast it gets done on here, don't sweat it. It's gonna get there but I'm just working with the tools that I have and the wood can be a little bit unpredictable, but that's kind of what makes it fun to cook. So I've set a timer for four minutes. I'm gonna come back and check on it and see if we can do a spin. All right, so check this out. This is one of the little guys and this is the dough that we made today. It definitely has a little bit more pop to it at this point. Uh, it should be rested long enough now for us to be able to roll it out though. So this is a dough ball that's about about half the size of that last calzone we made. Yeah, it's definitely just got a bit more freshness, a bit more spring to it. 
But I have a feeling that even that day old dough is gonna work out. So we're gonna go even a little bit simpler on this one. We're gonna definitely get that ricotta in there. We're just gonna go all cheese on this calzone. When I was testing and doing my test cooks and my trial runs on these, this was actually my favorite one. Ricotta, that mixture with the Tuscan seasoning, a little mozzarella, and a slice of provolone. That's it. This dough for sure, this fresh dough for sure has like a, a little bit more resistance to it. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes since we balled it up and I, I typically wouldn't go any sooner than that. So this is kind of like the minimum rest time before you want to stretch after forming your dough balls. All right, four minutes. That's how long it took us to put together that smaller calzone. But that's looking good. It's a light coloring. We could definitely go for a little more flame and a little more color. Let's see that bottom. Yeah, we're getting there. I'm gonna move this just a touch closer now. Spun it around. We'll put baby brother right up here next to him. We'll go ahead and throw another log on. We can bump that temp up a little bit. That's looking real nice. Got a little bit of that char on there on the back. We probably could have a little bit more browning. Might just see about toasting off the top here. Boy, I'd hate to go any further to be honest. That looks just about right. Oh, and there's the little dude. I think it's ready to go. All right, we got a couple examples done already, but while I'm playing around, I'm just gonna do one more. We got a lot of staff to feed today. I'll probably go cheese on this one, but I wanted to show you guys a fun trick you can do uh, once you've got these formed up due to the outside. So we'll just do the same setup as last time. Had a little one. Our cheese calzone. So check this out, we're gonna put a little bit of that olive oil on the surface here. Come on, woo. Brush that around. You can do a toasted Parmesan on top. It's not toasted yet, but it will be when it's done. And take your Parmesan and just grate it super fine right there on top. You got the temp just right. All right, that's what three minutes looks like. Yeah, it's all like crusted on there. Looks awesome. Let's give it a couple more. Now that's about all the color we want to get on there. Not even four and a half minutes on that little guy. I think we've waited long enough that these aren't going to be just molten lava on the inside. And it smells incredible. Dough's cooked all the way through. Just right. I do like the smaller size. Like it just fits in your hand. It feels like I'm going somewhere and I'm probably not putting this down. Dunk it in your sauce. I do want to open it up though, just to take a look. Oh yeah, oozy cheesy goodness. Woo! Dang, that's good. So much flavor going on. The ricotta just carries it because it's like, it's like flavored lava. It's just everywhere. I regret biting into it while it was still that hot a little bit. No, no, I'm good. I don't. All right, I'm gonna check out this other one. Sausage inside. Let's give that a try. Mmm. Well, that sausage flavor hits first, for sure. And that's great. If you're a sausage lover, that's the one to go with. But classic cheese one, that's about all I need. Yeah, that stuff's way too hot right now. <laughs> but what a great little crust on the outside, huh? 
Well, I had a lot of fun with this one today. Uh, I hope you guys will give it a try and let me know what you're putting inside your calzones because uh, we're certainly not limited to the ingredients that we use today. But since we have been building on some of these Italian flavors in our previous videos, uh, I really enjoy getting to use that pizza dough and that Italian sausage. Those are both videos that are worth checking out and I hope you guys will do that. Uh, if you enjoyed the recipe, make sure you check out atbbq.com and pick up some of these products that we carry. And as always, we really appreciate it if you guys hit, hit that subscribe button. Let us know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section down below, and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.